So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be conscious and moral. And we know that our morality can never come to fruition in the fullest sense of the word until and unless we recognize the proper role models. Because there is an innate nature in us to never be satisfied unless we reach perfection. We know we don't have perfection in ourselves at the moment, but the potential to reach perfection is within us. And Allah helps us to reach perfection. First and foremost, by sending role models and representatives who are perfect and protected by Allah from deviation and from wrongdoing. And their message is perfect. Even Iblis, as we know, mentions this by his own tongue when he says that I will beguile all of your creations, mankind. I am going to beguile every one of them. Except those purified by you, O Allah, the ones you have protected, chosen to direct mankind, those I cannot touch. Even Iblis agrees with that. As you know, Imam Ali salam is a very controversial figure. He's a very controversial figure because though within the different schools of thought, we all agree that he is rightly guided. To the lovers of Ahlul Bayt, he is beyond that. To the lovers of Ahlul Bayt, he is the brother of the Prophet, chosen from the same branch as the Prophet says, Ana wa Aliun in Shajratin Wahida. Ali and I are from one tree. We are of the same Noor. And thus the family that revolves around the messengers are critical that Allah, even in the Quran, in Surah An-Nur, He says, Min shajaratin mubarakatin, zaytunatin la sharqiyatin wa la gharbiyya. A blessed tree, neither east nor west. It's a blessed chosen tree. So when we talk about Ahlul Bayt, when we talk about Imam Ali alayhi salam, we're not talking about issues that we have added as salt and pepper and spices to make this whole scenario of a new school of thought. When Allah has made them extraordinary, that even in the challenge of the Christians, Allah has made them extraordinary. What authority do you and I have to make them ordinary? What authority do you and I have to say, it's okay, they're just one of the companions. Sure, they're just one of the family of the Prophet. They were good, but others were also good. How can we blur our role models by mixing the good with the not so good and then claim to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it possible? It's a command of Allah in the Quran. It is a command of Allah for us to focus because it is these role models. When you and I focus and obey, believe me, brothers and sisters, I say with a sincere heart, no Karbala would have taken place. No death and treachery on earth would have taken place the way it is now. In fact, it would have been a very rare occasion on earth where a person would kill someone. Rare. This world would have been a paradise. They say the children of Imam Ali salam, were captured to the point where they were buried between pillars. Hajjaj ibn Yusuf had a field day killing Ahlul Bayt. Muawiyah and Yazid had a field day attacking Ahlul Bayt. That even Imam Hassan says to Muawiyah that I will agree to not attack you because you are is a treacherous leader. He says, the condition of the treaty is do not harm the children of Ali and his family. Why? Because the animosity lies there. So Imam Ali salam is very controversial because he is that link, as we call it, that guards the city of knowledge. That's why the Prophet so eloquently said, Ana madinatul ilm wa aliyun babuha. When Imam Ali salam, when they realized that they made mistakes, the people went to his house after the third Khalifa was tragically killed. People ganged up on him and killed him. It's a tragic scenario when anyone is killed. I don't care who it is. And they go to the house of Imam Ali alayhi salam, and they said, we acknowledge, we acknowledge, we acknowledge. They pulled him out of his house. They dragged him, literally. They were so excited that you have to take that position that God has conferred upon you. For we have realized that the Muslim Ummah has degraded in so many ways. And you find Imam Ali salam accepts that with conditions. He said, you will obey me the way Allah has commanded. They agreed. Sadly, when he comes into power, many forces had already taken their bases in deep formations. One being Muawiyah. 
Muawiyah for 30 years plus had been establishing himself and taking from the public treasury to build a vast empire. History a little bit brothers and sisters. The Byzantine Empire which is Syria today, that empire today when it fell from the Christian hands to the Muslims, the first governor was Muawiyah's brother who died very shortly before. And then right after that, as you know, Muawiyah takes governorship and never leaves it till his death. Never leaves that leadership. And remember, the people of Byzantium, who were Syrians of the time, had not seen Ahl al-Bayt. It was foreign to them, they were Christians. And many had converted to Islam, either through trade or whatever means. But they were not aware of the true power of Ahl al-Bayt. Thus Muawiyah systematically kept them in the dark and created all kinds of false ideas against Ahl al-Bayt, which culminates, culminates in Ashura, that after Imam Hussain is martyred, when Imam Zain al-Abideen and Zainab salam enter the city of Sham, which is known as Syria, when they enter it, people were mocking at them, mocking them that it's good God has killed you, or you recalcitrant people who, is dis who are disobeying the caliph of the time. Not realizing that the ones that they killed were the blood and the prophet himself. Not realizing that. And that is why the power of the revolution of Karbala was so strong that when Imam Zainul Abidin enters the city of Sham and Imam Zainul Abidin climbs the pulpit, for the first time he addresses himself as to who he really is, the people of Syria begin to realize what a mistake they have made. Understand this was Muawiyah. Tonight we commemorate the shahad of Imam Ali salam on these grounds, on the grounds of hikmah, on the grounds of justice, that while he is the Khalifa, when somebody, a Christian man takes his shield, Imam doesn't taunt him and says, I am the Khalifa, you have stolen my shield, give it back to me and I will behead you. No, he goes into court and the judge addresses the Christian man by his first name and then he calls Imam Ali by his title, higher status. And Imam is annoyed and the judge says, you're already annoyed. He said, how dare you have given me a higher status before you have passed the judgment, before you have heard the arguments, how did you confer upon me greater status? Will you find just people like this in the world today? That the minute we get a little authority, we want to abuse it. You think Imam Ali can be compared on this earth like this? That's why Allah says, Anfusana wa anfusakum. That when he goes to the great, when he goes to the masjid and he becomes shaheed, that stroke should strike our hearts that I need this man as my role model. For if I'm ever going to come to his perfection to the love of the Prophet, because he is my reflector of the Prophet, there's a Prophet said, وَالشَّمْسِ وَالْضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا By the sun and its brilliance and the moon which follows it. He says, I am that sun and the moon that follows me is Ali ibn Abi Talib and the remaining 11 Imams who will reflect me when I am not there. What a personality. I've had personalities who say when they go to his haram, there's an energy there that's second to none other than the prophets, really. Tonight we must reflect on him, not only as a personality, but as a person to say, what can I do to bring unity in my community? What can I do to be a good father? What can I be, what can I do to be a good brother and a sister? Allah says, maintain unity. I'll give you a quick story before I end. When Imam Ali salam's khilafah was taken, a man of the Jewish faith comes to him and says to him that you see, the Prophet just died and you guys are already disputing about the authority. So he starts taunting Imam Ali. Now what could Imam Ali have done? If he was not a wise man, he would have taken advantage of that and said, yeah, you know, these guys have done an injustice to me because we're all so willing to complain to anybody when our rights are taken. Look at Imam Ali alayhi salam, Allah wa kafa billahi wakila, that he has nothing but trust to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look how he replies, as a lesson for you and me, that as Muslims in this society, do not allow Sunni Shia differences to divide us. Please, never. When I see my brothers of different schools of thought, I see them nothing but as my Muslim brothers. What does Imam Ali reply to this Jewish man? He says to him, your forefathers, when they were freed, from Egypt and your leader Moses went up to the mountain, their feet 
had not even dried of the salt water and they were already worshipping an idol. We Muslims have not gone there. We're united in the Kaaba. We're united in God. We're united in the Prophet. We're united in the Quran. We must unite as a Muslim Ummah and on a larger scale with our Christian and Jewish brethren. We must and subhanallah even in these communities there are Christian pastors and priests who help the Muslims and there are rabbis who support the cause of the Muslims just like the Muslims who support the cause of the Christians and the Jews. We come together. We understand our differences, but we understand our, our, our differences and we understand our goals in life is to maintain unity for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these discussions is for this reason. And tonight when we commemorate his tragic uh, sacrifice for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this should be the lesson of our lives. For Imam Ali went to the altar of death in sujood in a masjid to teach us a lesson. And if we don't follow this lesson, then our love for Imam Ali alayhi salam is out of focus and it won't bring us benefit. It will harm us. It will harm us for sure.